Hi everybody, I'm back again. Uh, sorry I've been absent. I started a new job and things have been a little bit crazy. But today I was going through some old broken stock and I found this necklace and I really liked the chain even though it's already missing a couple pieces and broken. I'm going to bring it up as close as I can. Maybe it'll focus for you. It has these great little dots and just texture to it. So when I was going through some stuff, I found this and I thought that these links would make some really great earrings. The necklace overall is pretty heavy and it's missing some rhinestones and of course the ending. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of links off and use these, I think they're enameled or lacquered paper beads that somebody made and some head pins and some ear lever backs for the earring part. And I'm gonna make a pair of earrings out of a couple loops out of this necklace. So I have some pliers with me today and I have my round nose pliers. I'm not gonna be using my one step looper today because it makes the loops too small to go around these links. I'm also going to add a couple jump rings in here. So to get started, I'm going to take a couple of these links apart. i got to find the seam on them. So here's the seam. I'm going to pull them apart. So they open up enough to where I can get the bigger link out. There isn't quite enough room for, there we go, my pliers to really get in there so I have to pull on them a couple times. I'm going to grab another link off of this one. So I hope you guys are all doing good out there with everything. I know things have been crazy for a lot of people. Let's see if I'll just let me pull this apart. Not quite. Ooh. We almost got it. There we go. There's one at least. We'll part this one. Okay. So I think that's it for the links. I'm going to set this guy aside. And I'm going to take two links. Oops. And I'm just going to put them right back on the bigger link. And kind of close it up as best as I can. I don't want anything to come off or out. So these little links too. See if I can get it close enough for you. Have these wonderful little texturing too that kind of matches these bigger links. So now that I have the two links on this one, I'm gonna do it for this one here as well. I'm thinking of doing it one of two ways. Doing it with the two smaller links at the top and putting one link high. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try it. Well, let's see. I was testing to see if 
It would link up, but I would still need a jump ring on the top to get it to lay properly. So I'm going to keep them down at the bottom. We'll see how it looks. So I have these paper beads off to the side and my head pins. So I'm going to go ahead and put the head pins through the beads. Just like that. There we go. Oh, I wonder. I bet I could use my looper tool today. So here's my one step looper. This, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I love this tool. So it just, the head pin just goes right through. There's a hole here. And it will cut the wire right here as it makes the little eye around the post. So right there. Do the same thing over here. So if you haven't had a chance to check out like my Facebook page or my Instagram or anything like that, um, this is a hobby I do in addition to a full-time job. I'm just going to see if these would fit on here. There we go, just like that. So I'm going to close this up a little bit. So sometimes coming down here with a full-time job and how crazy everything is, it can be hard sometimes, but it's also really relaxing to come in here and just craft. So I'm sure you saw that the little bead that I put on came right through this gap on the link that we put back on. So what I'm trying to do is tighten it up. There we go. So they don't come off and that happens a lot when you're using like the thin wire and it's just too thin it fits through gaps on jump rings or chain links and necklaces come apart while you're wearing it and it's too thin to like fix while you're out and about so I'm trying to get all three of them down here. So I'm trying to do these quick videos and stuff to just kind of show you that you don't necessarily have to have everything a jewelry maker has in order to make jewelry. And I know a lot of people are really into like the Goodwill rescue boxes, thread up boxes when they come out and buying jewelry lots and stuff off of like eBay and Etsy. Oh, these ones are really open. And some people are just looking for like wearable pieces and they don't know what to do with all the, the broken pieces that come through the boxes or um, just when something breaks but they still have sentimental value to it like the beads are really special so I'm hoping showing that you can just take something that you already have and redo it into something 
that you want to wear again or can wear again because it might be too small or anything like that. Alright, I opened that guy up a little bit more to get him where I want him. I tried doing ooh, another video a while ago and I had a lot of a lot of digital problems with it and I wasn't able to salvage enough to show you guys anything from it. And that was a little that was a little discouraging to get through that. But alright, one more to go. Might have tightened that one a little bit too much. See how he doesn't want to... There we go. And sometimes too, when repurposing jewelry, you need to start over or scrap your first idea because it just didn't work or you didn't have the right parts, and that's fine. As long as you try again or maybe you get a different bit of inspiration or something and you want to try something different with that part. The one thing that I try not to reuse, well I never reuse, is when I get earrings. And if I can, I'm going to replace the ear wire. This part. Um, just because that's, you know, the part that comes with the most contact with the previous wear. And I can wipe it down and clean it with something that's non-abrasive and that's not really the issue but it's just more comfortable especially if it's something like I'm gonna wear then I would like want to just start fresh with a new a new wire and then that way you know the spring and stuff isn't as tired as if it was from somebody else and it's just kind of like a nice refresher to So I'm a little bit worried about that gap. I'm going to try to squeeze it shut a little bit. That gap right there. All right, I think that's close. So there we have it. Just some fun, funky little earrings that kind of have like this industrial little bit of they kind of remind me of the radio tubes or fuses or something, these colors that were off this previous necklace I think I got these off of. I'm not sure where these paper beads came from, but there we go. Some links from a big necklace, some new findings. Oh, see, I already have to replace that one. That one's a little tired. That's too bad. That just came out of a new pack. And some beads and some head pins. So there we go. And another version of these that you can make in a different way that I made earlier to test if this would work out is this, where I have the two smaller links up top and these guys link to the bottom. And this pair, I have the links on the top and the bottom. And so that's it. There's two pairs of earrings already. If I wanted to keep going with different beads and stuff, I have plenty more chain. This is even heavy enough it can make for like a nice bracelet. And figure out something to do with these guys later. Alright. Take care of yourselves out there. Thank you for watching.